We have a question from the floor, please. Chairman John Strafford. Um, could the panel please explain to me where they draw the boundaries to free speech? Um, is it, uh, you know, can I make racist remarks? Can I make sexist remarks? Can I make homophobic remarks? At what point do you move into, uh, no, you can't? Catherine, that is one for you to start. Well, it's, thank you. <laughs> it's obviously unbelievably tricky. There is, you know, there is, there's, you can only have free speech in an ideal world, but um, I think it's, it's where there's absolutely obvious definite harm, isn't it? It's where you could, you know, national security, obviously there's, you make an exception to freedom of speech for that. You do for sort of physical safety of people, as in the Oliver Wendell Holmes, no freedom of shout fire in a crowded theatre. Um, and I think also in case of when someone's trying to, you know, assassinate people's reputations to bring them down, which a state might well be party to, you want to be able to defend your reputation yeah, through libel laws or in the courts as well, the courts being independent of the state. But I think in the end, we have all got to learn to be more robust. I think we've all got terribly sort of concerned to be sensitive because I, when you've had minority groups in this country, they have seemed to need, or perhaps genuinely needed, special protection for a certain amount of time. Um, but that has resulted in kind of unfairnesses, so that you could, you know, blaspheme against one religion but not another. Some people have been allowed to be much more thin-skinned than others. I, and, and I think in the end, we've all got to be fairly robust about um, about being hurt, about being offended, about hearing things we really hate. Um, and I think probably I would, I think the line is really, it's almost sort of physical harm or national security, or is it a reputation? I, I think bad words really have to be allowed. I think we should actually endorse the Duke of Wellington's famous comment, I mean, publish and be damned, uh, so long as damnation comes after publication. The area that uh, we should uh, restrain uh, must be uh, extremely narrow, perhaps not as narrow as the Pentagon Papers, but uh, I mean, libel, you can fight your case in court, that's fine, uh, so long as you do so with the burden of proof on you. But Catherine talks about uh, <laughs> the famous quote about stopping people shouting fire in a crowded theatre. Uh, many of the people I defend now under the Terrorism Act are guilty of no more than shouting fire in an empty theatre. Uh, no one would, uh, would possibly take any notice of them. I, I, there was a f f famous case a couple of years ago, Parliament passed this law that uh, required anyone who was uh, out to uh, overthrow a foreign country by violent means to be jailed for terrorist offences. Of course, the first people they rounded up were uh, the poor old uh, Libyan uh, opponents of Gaddafi uh, who were doing no more than planning to foment a revolution in which Gaddafi would be, uh, as it were, the only person killed. They were jailed for three years uh, under the uh, uh, Parliament's law, which made no exception and would have jailed uh, the supporters of Nelson Mandela in the old days. So uh, I do think that uh, anti-terrorism laws have, have brought in a whole raft of, uh, of difficult decisions about, which has really ended uh, Britain's historic role as the the, uh, as it were, giving succor <coughs> to those who, who wanted to fight for uh, freedom in other countries. So there are, uh, there are two kinds of issues. One is where do you draw the line in criminal law, and we, uh, as I are about to enter into the 50th anniversary of the Lady Chatterley verdict, uh, which began the freedom of, of literature, and now we, we tend not to prosecute the written word for obscenity and concentrate on uh, paedophilia and uh, uh, indecency with children. That seems to be uh, one area that uh, the heat has been taken out of by a sensible line drawing exercise. But uh, as far as the criminal law is concerned, um, beware the stretch uh, in the anti-terrorism statutes. John? Um, I think we should look at it the other way around. Look to, I don't usually say this, look to the United States. First Amendment um, is absolutely sacrosanct. There is a right to free speech. It is unarguable. It is not qualified. There is a right to free speech. When you begin with that, then everything else sort of finds its place. If you go to print tomorrow and describe me as a murderer or a paedophile or something like that, I would sue you. 
if you did something that was egregious and malicious and wrong, then I need redress to defend my reputation. Short of that, you should work from the assumption that you say whatever you like, when you like, to whomsoever you like. It's a fundamental recalibration of the balance. And um, there was a remarkable lecture uh, a few weeks ago by Lord Hoffman, um, an esteemed um, law lord, um, who was basically saying that our campaign was all a, a get up and there was no problem with libel tourism, in fact there wasn't much problem with libel, and that who needed to learn from these Americans anyway, because um, they're all dubious, and the one particular case that has launched this libel tourism campaign, uh, a book by an American author called Rachel Ehrenfeld, um, in which a Saudi billionaire um, uh, took her to court and won on the basis of the fact that 23 copies of her book found, found their way into the UK, and he said his reputation had been damaged um, in the UK. And what Lord Hoffman simply said was, we don't need to learn from the Americans, because this, this woman anyway, she's a friend of the neocons in Washington, so um, she got everything that she needed to, uh, that, that she deserved. Now, I'm no neocon, but I can tell you, if you having this point of view that if you say things that are a bit dodgy, then you should have the book thrown at you, literally. And if that seeps in, which I think it has to a certain degree, into our body politic, um, then there is a serious um, problem with free speech. The American rule includes the rule that you do not have to speak, but you have the freedom to do so.